Hi there, welcome back to my channel Scrap and Coffee. This is part two for the Sea Dream or actually the Waterfall album. Um, I do have to say my tutorials for this album are kind of a disaster. <laughs> Uh, so I was working on the page for the album and tried to film it while I was doing it but that totally did not work out so I'm going to show you the construction of the page real quick or not real quick but just um, show you the construction only and then after the construction I will edit in some pieces of the previous video that I've made which was a disaster but at least show you how I did some of the uh, cutting the pattern papers so I did a continuous matting. So I will show you how I've cut the papers for your stack pockets and how I've cut the papers for this part here. And then, um, yeah, you will at least have just a little bit more of a, a tutorial for the page construction that is actually making sense. So I'm going to start here. I've cut all my pieces to size. I've scored them and I've applied my tape except for the stack pocket pieces because we are going to cut some angles in those. But I'm going to flip over my stack here and we are going to start at the beginning. Uh, so you will start with your piece E and piece F that's going to form your actual tunnel page or your binding page so piece E has one score line at the six and a quarter inch mark and we are going to fold towards the pumpy side and burnish that fold okay the lining is not too bad right the sun was shining into my um, onto my work space but let's see if I give it a little bit more daylight I'm placing piece E in front of me where the flap is on my right hand side and then we have piece F two score lines tape on the dented side and we are going to again fold towards that bumpy side for both score lines and then piece F will go on top of piece E when we open the flap up on your left hand side on the large part so we are going to line it up so I'm going to flip this around or not flip it but so I, the long side is now on the bottom I'm going to line that up and line up the sides from this point of view just making sure that I'm happy with my placement before I stick it all down we can fold that flap over then we have our piece G again a large piece and here okay I do need to get rid of that Sun a little bit piece G you have two score lines here with a 1 8 inch gusset and then another score line right there and your tape is on the bumpy side between your cut edge and your half inch score line and then from the score line you're going to taper towards the cut edge, so from your half inch score line. You don't want to taper your gusset area. I hope you can see that. And then we can fold on all our score lines again to the bumpy side. So let's just do this one, it's easy. Last one is the most tricky one for me at least. Okay, so we're gonna your tape is on the inside now, and what we are gonna do is I get our page in, open the flap up, piece F is here. And we are going to slide that half inch into the pocket, sticking it on top of piece, actually on the back of piece F. So you slide that in that page. You're going to make sure that you fit up to your first score line. And then so you can see both score lines and your little gusset area there. So 
I fit. If you don't fit, you just miter or sorry, you taper that half inch a little bit better. So without sticking it before you want to, that's the tricky part, I guess. Slide it in there up to that score line. And give that a burnish. So here we are. Now we're gonna have two pieces of H, yep, H. So these are gonna form our side pockets. So what you can do, I did this in my album, so I will show you what I did. Although somebody throw it on the floor. And that somebody is my almost one year old. <laughs> Uh, my envelope punch board, or this is actually a one, two, three punch board, but I just call that my envelope punch board. Uh, what I did is I've made my punches offset, and for both I did I lined up the sorry for my uh, hands, the left cut edge with the two and seven eighths, and then oof, one will be on the top. And the other one will end up being on the bottom. But if you are using a collection uh, with large images like I'm using from Samperia, or you also there are also other brands that have that, you might want to take into account your image on where you make your punch if you want to make your punch. Uh, because you don't want to end up cutting into your wheel or something. Like I have the wheel there. I have the wheel here, so I took an account that I was not gonna go into that image that I want to keep, right? So I just made sure that was out of the way. Okay, so for both, miter the corners, cut with a 45 degree angle where the score lines are meeting to reduce bulk. Or you can do that in any way that you prefer to do that. And then we can fold and burnish towards the bumpy side on all our score lines. So this is going to be a shallow pocket. Okay. So we can attach these. And like in the cutting guide it says cut it just a slight hair under your two and a half inches. Why is that? Maybe you even need to cut it down a little bit further than you already did. But one is going to go here. And that's actually the cut edge of your piece F. And you want to make sure that if you follow that cut edge, that this flap can close without catching onto the pocket. So if you need to cut it down a slight hair more, then you need to do that at this moment. Otherwise you need to, or you can always slice down a little hair from your flap as well, but I prefer not to. But if that's what you need to do, then that's what you need to do. So I'm actually pretty perfect here. So it's not a complete 1 16th of an inch that I uh, cut it down, but just like a slight, slight hair. I'm going to remove the tape backing on the long side. So I could place my bone folder on the flap to keep it there, but it's not like I'm going to place my pocket somewhere else. So I'm carefully bringing it along that cut edge. So again, I don't want to go over the score lines of this piece here, right? I need to keep those clear. Burnish that. And then if you want to, you can place some tape over that half inch flap. I try to make it a habit because I almost never place my pattern paper all the way into the pocket. And then your photo mats might be, it might be tricky to get your photo mats in there. Okay, now I'm going to remove the tape backing here. And I find that with these long but shallow pockets, it can be a little bit tricky to get them on there the way you want to. So be a little bit careful with that. Don't force them too much uh, into places where you want it to go, but... Yeah, so I don't know how to explain that, but like I'm, I have, I will show you on the other one. Here we go again. Okay, so here again, I'm going to place it where I bump it up against the school line, and I still have that one eighth of an inch gusset there. And I'm going to see, and here I do need to cut it down a slight hair more because it's sketching, and I don't want that. 
So I'm just going to open it all up. It's a little bit of shame of that punch, but maybe I can repunch it. So maybe I need to check that first before I make my punch. Uh, but I'm going to cut off a slide here. And because it was so little, I'm not even going to be worried about that um, envelope punch there. Okay, this is pretty... I think it's exactly right. You rather have a small gap than things overlapping, basically. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing. Remove that long piece of tape backing. And just really make sure for yourself that you don't go over that score line. And that you keep that gusset clear from any attachments. Again, just some simple tape there. So what I intend to do is remove my tape backing from these flaps. And then really bring that along the cut edge and then do the same thing here. But with this long pocket, you might force it into a way where it doesn't want to go. And then it's it's really going to stand up um, to a, yeah, where you don't like how it looks. So I am trying to just fold it in and from the middle bring it out. I think it's giving me a little bit of a better result, but it's still, it intends to stand up a little bit okay so now we have this so here we have a stack pocket and here we only have the shallow pocket so here I also want to have a stack pocket and for that I'm going to use my piece I and for piece I you scored on three sides but you've only placed the tape or you're only gonna place the tape on your short sides you don't need any tape on the long side then from the short side you're going to cut with a really slight angle towards your intersection of score lines and then from the bottom you're going to cut with an angle about a 45 degree angle again towards that intersection let's do the same thing here slight angle or straight you can also cut straight on the score line or just above the score line and then here again with the angle you don't want to angle it too much on the side and then you can fold on those short sides only. There we are. And then opening this back up. So we go to the side where we only have the shallow pocket. And here we can slide that half inch up to the score line in the shallow pocket. And make sure that we line up on the edges. So I do. Okay, so I've removed the tape backing from the sides. I'm going to slide that pocket in place here. Give that a burnish. And don't worry about seeing your score line here. If you have made the punch, uh, you will uh, cover that up with your pattern paper. When you cut your pattern paper, just cut it about half an inch into the pocket, into the shallow pocket. And don't put any glue on that bottom half inch to make sure that you don't glue down your top pocket and you can still place everything to the bottom uh, that's basically the thing that you need to take into account what i did in this album is i've placed magnets to keep the uh, flaps shut first i did two sets on both and i just changed it up to just one because for me that was enough you can also use a journal card or a photo or something to place in the pocket over the flap to keep that flap closed so you don't really need a magnet, but um, yeah, I did it in this album. So, okay, this is done. Now we're gonna work on our angled pockets. Okay, for your angled pockets, you're gonna need two pieces of J and two pieces of K. So this is for the back and the front of the page. Uh, let's start with our pieces J. We are going to mirror the pieces, at least, at least that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, where's my pencil? Right there. So on one of these pieces, I'm gonna go to the, I have three score lines. And my uh, one score line is on the bottom, so I don't have any score line here. On that top cut edge, I am going to measure from the left cut edge, two inches. 
and mark that. Then I'm going to go to the score line here on the right hand side. And on that score line I am going to measure from the top cut edge one and a half inches down. Like that. And then I am going to place my ruler where I can connect those pencil lines. And you can draw your line all the way from the pencil line here down. I am only going to do that on that half inch because that's enough for me to line it up in my paper trimmer. But you can just draw your whole line. So on my other piece I'm going to do the same thing but from the other side. So here from the red, from my right hand side on top, I'm measuring two inches. And then on the, the score line on my left hand side, from the top edge, on the score line, I will measure one and a half inches down. One and a half inches down on the score line and again connect those two. So we can cut those angles. So let's cut those angles. So this is my edge where it's going to cut. So there I'm going to line up the pencil line that I have there and the tick mark that I have here on top. When I'm happy with my placement, I'm going to cut off that piece. And I will do the same thing here. So I need to have my pencil mark there and the line there and cut it off. So then these are prepared, we need to place our tape, but let's just first make the angles in the other one because we are basically doing the same thing in our pieces K. So on one, I'm going to mark, so again the score line is on the bottom and on the sides. I'm going to mark on the top cut edge two inches from the left and then on the score line on the right, I am going to measure one and a half inches down from the cut edge on top. One and a half. So the same thing, only on a smaller piece. And then here we will do the same thing from the other side again. So two inches from the right cut edge inwards and then on the left one and a half inches on the score line down. And connect it. So I don't find it hard to make these angled pockets, but they are a little bit harder to cut your pattern paper for. Okay, so we will be making two sets. Okay, so here I have a straight edge on the left, so I want to have it on the right for the short piece and vice versa. And then we can place our tape on these pieces. So on the dented side, on the three sides with the score line, between the cut edge and your score line. Okay, because I've already angled the pocket, I need to cut off my tape overhang. Now we can miter the corners on the bottom. Okay, let me see how I did it in the other one. Yep, so you can decide for yourself how you want to do it, but on the front of the page, what I did was um, place the large one with the straight edge on the left hand side. So let's just do that for this one as well. It doesn't really matter, right? It's all the same. Well, it's not the same, but. not wrong if you do that in the other way. Okay. So I am going to open up this page. For me that's the easiest way to go. Remember we have that 1 8 of an inch gusset here. This is piece G. And make sure uh, that you have it in the right way. Piece G is the front of your page. Open it up and then we have your our gusset here in the middle. And then the edge of piece E, or actually your pocket page. So I'm just, you can, if everything went well, 
just align this piece exactly between your folded edge here of piece G and that uh, score line here before the gusset. So again, the gusset is going to stay free from any attachment. So I will do the same thing where I remove the tape backing from the bottom half inch flap and just choose one corner to start align it along that bottom and place some tape on that half inch tape. Oh, that might have been a little bit too much but okay Okay, and then I will remove the tape backing of the side flaps and bring it up. So I've done not a really good job here because I'm not completely straight, but okay. It's just for, uh, I don't know if I'm going to use this page actually, so I'm not worrying about it. But of course you want to try to do it straight. Okay, and then the other one, make sure that the straight edge is on the other side than the first pocket. We're going to place on top of that first pocket. I don't often do it that way. I hardly ever do it that way, but that's all we're going to do now. And then the point, the lowest point of your piece J should match up with the top point of piece K. So again you can place your tape, I'm not going to worry about it now, I think you got the point. And then place it on here. So I don't think it's the end of the world that it's not completely straight, it's just sticking over here a little bit, I don't know how well you can see that. But it's, I think it will still function, so that's, it's not the end of the world. Okay, flipping it over to the back side again, make sure it's still in the right orientation. We are going to repeat. So first piece J, then piece K. So again, you can lay it flat if you want to. Just opening it up. And it should fit on that page again exactly where you don't go over that gusset. And again, bring that up. And then your page is constructed. That's it. That's all. Let's do it. I just kept it simple with pockets where you can just enjoy all the beautiful paper and still have room for lots of photos. So um, yeah, this is it. So if you want to see it, um, after this part, there will be some decorating. Um, yeah, it won't, won't be all very... Um, yeah, I don't know how to say it. I was a hot mess. That's basically it. But... Um, so what I was thinking is to have this image go over this view of the page. So I am going to cut slightly under his... Uh, <laughs> how do you call that? Okay, I think I'm going to cut off one and a half inches from the bottom. Okay, yes. And then I need to cut it to eight and a half because this is eight and three quarters so i'm working with a one eight inch border actually i'm working with a little bit less than one eight of an inch border but that's always confusing so i'm giving you the measurements for a one eight inch border so eight and a half okay there we go and what i did with the previous pages like this is scraps of one page and this is scraps of one page and i kind of kept them together so i will do that with this one also Okay, so that is one. So now I will cut my piece for my flap, which is four and a quarter. So I will cut it to four. Yeah. And now I need to carefully measure my pocket. So it's closer to one and seven eighths. So I would normally cut it to one and five eighths. So you, you measure it and you take off a quarter inch, right? 
Okay, and then I need to make the punch there. prayer here I'm not sure if that's in frame but um, that looks pretty okay to me yep okay so there we have it so now I need to cut my pattern paper again so this one again it's one and seven eighths so I'm gonna cut it slightly under one and three quarters and the other one needs to be four Oh, and I was thinking I was going to be short, but I have a little strip left even. That's nice. Okay, so let's make the punch there. So what I did on the pattern paper was two and a quarter. Did, oh, yeah, I did it right. I thought I punched on the wrong side of the paper. That would have been a nightmare. Okay, I'm gonna ink it up. This one is inked and stuck down in the meanwhile. So I'll do the same thing here. Okay, I'm going to use this. 12 by 12 sheet on the front of the page with the stack pocket. I'm sorry for the light and I'm sorry for a little bit more background noise. It's just hard to avoid. So uh, I'm going to start with cutting the width of my pattern paper, which will be uh, 6 inches. So I am going to yeah, basically cut it in half. I'm going to cut 6 inches. I want to get the turtle on there. Okay, so that other half is my scrap piece and um, I'm not in love with the image here. It's not terrible or something, but I, I think I'm going to use more uh, from, the, from the top. But the hard thing is I want to start on the bottom pocket. <laughs> so um, maybe I can do it differently and just draw on my pattern paper what I need to do. So if this is the top, if this is the top, and I need to go here, two and three quarters. Okay, so I'm going to measure here two and three quarters. I'm going to do that at one, then more spot. I will try to keep in frame. Two and three quarters. So I'm basically measured my cut edge from the page up to the cut edge of the first pocket. And I will do that a little bit here as well. And I'm trying to do it really light because I need to erase it later. Two and three quarters. And then add one and a half should this be. Yes, so the paper will start here, so I need to do that at 1 and 3 eighths. So I'm going to mark 1 and 3 eighths on that line that I just draw. And then on this side I need to mark, let's measure from 0, 4 and a quarter. Four and a quarter, and then I need to find my mark on the line there and connect that with the mark there. And then that piece should fit. going in the pocket slightly so again if I want to 
Ja. Yeah. Ah, oh, this is scary. Right? I'm so scared that I'm going to have this up. Um, okay, so I've measured. Let's uh, break this down. I've measured the height from the top edge of my page to the top edge of the first pocket. That was uh, two and three quarters. So I've measured that on the edge on my right hand side i've measured that one more time a little bit further in on the paper uh, to draw a straight line then i've measured the width of this piece of the straight edge of that first pocket that was one and a half inches so i decided to go with one and three eighths of an inch so i've marked the one and three eight inch on my line there on the straight line that i draw then i went to the outer uh, left hand edge measured again the top of the pocket top of the page to the top of the bottom pocket which was four and a quarter and i've marked that on the paper four and a quarter and then i connected the line between the pencil mark and that but i see that i have not done a really great job at that so that was the one and three eight inch. Yeah, sorry, my head is totally in frame probably. Okay, it's not too bad, but let's just um, make sure that I got it right. So I'm going to cut that angle now and I'm completely nervous about this. just did it if it's not working out I will just uh, figure out another way of doing this <laughs> okay so this piece should go in here where we can stick it just a little bit in the pocket you want to get it in there as yeah basically as little as we can okay and then this piece should fit here Okay, that's not bad and now I need to go from the corner here straight Ooh, I need to go straight for one and three eighths of an inch um, how am I going to make sure that that is straight Just use my ruler for that and hope for the best. So I'm lining up the edge of the paper with the grid of my ruler so I can mark one and three eighths of an inch. Because again that straight edge is um, one and a half on the pocket. So I lined it up one eighth of an inch next to my zero because it's a little bit easier for me to see if it lines up with the grid. So this is one eighth of an inch, so I need to add one and a quarter to that. And then let's check if I did that right. Yes, one and three eighths of an inch. And then I need to measure the top of the pocket to the top of the bottom pocket, which is three inches. So I'm going to mark on this edge three inches. And then I am going to connect that point with that point. And now we are really going to cut into that sea turtle. And the sea turtle is my favorite, so I don't want to mess this up. That's where we are going to cut. That looks like a completely weird piece, but it should work out. Okay, just do a little prayer. Okay, I'm acting weird because I'm nervous, I'm sorry. Okay. If I mess this up, I just need to take a trip to my scrapbook store to get another pack of this because I would be really upset. Okay, there you go, turtle. You are beheaded. Okay, so this is what I cut out. Totally weird piece. Be careful with that flimsy point. 
And I hope you are able to follow what I did. It fits. I did it, I did it, I did it. Oh my goodness. Look at that. So now all I need to do is measure how long this piece needs to be and cut off a straight line. And then you're gonna mess that up. That would be something. So I need to I need to have four and a half from the highest part. So um, that's what I'm going to line up in my uh, paper trimmer. This is four and a half. So for a one eight inch border, you would do four and a quarter. But take an account in my case, my edges here are not one eighth of an inch. So I'm gonna also cut this piece for a little bit of a smaller border. So I will probably cut it to four and three eighths of an inch. There we go. So I can cut it down a hair more. I rather cut it a little bit too large and cut it again. There we are. Oh, I did it. I'm happy with this. Maybe my angles are not completely perfect everywhere. I can live with that. This is totally fine for me. So let's ink this up and stick it down. Don't forget to remove any pencil marks that might be showing on your base cardstock or on your um, pattern paper. In my case my pattern paper is pretty okay and I will ink it anyway. But I do have my eye on it if I need to remove a little bit more. And I was a little bit heartbroken that I had to cut into that beautiful blue sea turtle that was on the back of this paper because I really love that one too. But that is what it is. I, I really love sea turtles. We've been to Mexico, I think it was February 2018 I guess it was. Yeah, I was pregnant with my son. Um, and we could swim with the sea turtles there. We could just walk into the ocean from our hotel room and um, yeah, just swim with the sea turtles. And I was not very well at that moment, so I could not go swim in the ocean very much. I had um, sinusitis, a pretty bad one, after the flight that we had. So I was dealing with a lot of headaches and stuff like that. So it was not a very good idea to just go... Um, yeah, I don't know how you call that with the it's not deep sea diving but it's more on the surface <laughs> but I just stayed on the surface but I could still really see the, the sea turtles and that was one of the best experiences of my life I really want to go back there again because I was not able to really swim a lot there um, to see them uh, but yes I did I did do it and I, that was so amazing. They're such peaceful, beautiful creatures. Okay, I'm just gonna make sure that that little point there has a really good stick. And then the final one. So you only want this paper to go in your pocket for a slight hair basically. You can say one eighth of an inch but you just want to make sure that your pattern can continue as best as you can. The more you put top piece in your pocket the more you will lose off your pattern and your pattern will basically not continue it will just jump. I hope that makes sense what I'm saying. So I would say one eighth of an inch your pattern paper into the pocket is uh, the most you want to go in. See mine is just on that edge basically. Uh, let me see that I can get that in frame. It's just on the edge. Okay, there we go. So in the meanwhile I've uh, decorated the cover. I didn't film the decorating part but I thought maybe some of you are interested to know what it is that I did. What papers did I use. Um, so I wrapped the spine with the blue um, 
print that was the back side of our circle element so there was one sheet that had four circle elements with an animal in it so this is the back side of that i cut off three i think it was three and three quarter i ended up doing and i've measured one inch from the spine and basically what i did what i like to do is i've measured six inches from the edge of my cover on my right hand side I've marked it, I draw a straight line, that was my guideline, and then I wrapped it with that paper. And then I have this paper here, which is, which is cut up completely now, of course, but that was actually this design. Uh, what I did here is I cut it in half, so just at the six inch mark, and then I've cut off one and a half inch from the top, one and a half inch from the bottom, and then I I think I cut off another 1 16th of an inch from top and bottom to make it fit on my cover with a nice small border. Uh, and then, so first I wanted to use this on the front with the beautiful flowers, but then I thought if I want to add something, it's going to be too much. So I decided to just use this side. And this will go on the back cover, by the way. I still need to stick that down but and then cut it to size, but this will go on the back cover right there. And that will be it for the back cover. Um, so I've got it to size where I have a small border there and a small border here. Well, I didn't do a really great job with sticking that down. I was a little bit too far to the cover here, but it's not too bad. And then this sea turtle was a leftover from uh, out of the circle elements. So I decided before I got into my blue paper, which two circle elements do I want to keep intact so I can use them or fuzzy cut the animal out. So that's how I decided on what side to cut. And then uh, I've backed that with some black cardstock and I've been placing chipboard. It's not able to see it like that. So it is a little bit dimension. I've placed all these little pieces of chipboard behind it to support that. So it, it's coming off. And then the Sea Dream I fuzzy cut out of the cover sheet. So that's basically just the title of the of the paper so uh, i've got that out i'm using as much as i can of these uh, of everything that i have i didn't care so much about all of this you can use it of course if you want to but i'm i think i'm not going to use it uh, so that is what i did with the cover again i just packed that with some black and i just stuck it down no dimension there and that is my cover i don't think i'm going to do anything more than that than this so um yeah then at least you know what papers i've used for that Okay, I'm at the point where I can place my three elements inside the cover. Um, for the waterfalls, I've kind of decided that I'm going to do this one on the front cover. And then it will combine with the turtle. And then on the back side, we will have these two together. Because I thought it was not so fun to have these two next to each other. So uh, that's what I ended up deciding. So this one will be the front cover and this one will be the back cover. So let's start with this one. I put a quarter inch tape around the perimeter on the back side and filled in the middle a little bit. I will probably combine that with wet glue. And then what I did is um, I placed that piece of cardstock there, which you don't have to do. You can just fix this with your pattern paper because I'm going to do that also right now. So first I thought I'm going to use these uh, pieces where there is blue on um, cut this in half and then to size in height of course and then I would have that behind it but I didn't directly it's a little bit dark to see but I didn't directly like that blue behind it then I saw that I also had this strip in my scraps I don't have a lot of scraps left but I and also I have this piece which is pretty small but it's enough for me to work so I'm thinking I'm just going to place that one down and then just cut this one to height and place that one down. I think I like that better than the blue right here. So um, I've kind of lost track of my ruler. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to cut it to height. Oh, here it is. Okay, just I'm not even going to worry about the width of this. It's, uh, I don't really mind. It's, you're going to see only a really small bit of it. And I need to glue down that corner there a little bit better. So I'm just going to um, ink this and place the strips and then the waterfall element will go on top. Okay, 
So I am just going to keep uh, my eye on that paper that I've placed. If you haven't placed that, then you can just stay away about one eighth of an inch from your uh, cover edge and from your spine and just make sure that you have enough width to cover this uh, where it's where your waterfall will maybe overlap a little bit. Try to make that somewhat straight. And I'm just eyeballing that I'm basically at the same height with this piece as I am there. Did this paper rip? Yeah. Hmm. Don't know when that happened, but it is. So I'm just putting some glue under there to glue the layers down again. Okay. And now I'm going to center this on there, which is, this is pretty bulky. So um, I need to be a little bit careful. Here we are. So finally all the tape backing is off. I'm adding some wet glue for wiggle time. I just need it because if I don't do it I get nervous and I am going to be crooked and I'm going to regret it. So why not? Ooh. <laughs> okay. Um, so I have to be a little bit careful because of the bulk. Uh, but I'm just starting with aiming on the bottom. So if you don't have that piece of cardstock, you go about an eighth of an inch from the bottom. If you do have that piece of cardstock, then you can line it up with that edge on top and bottom. So I'm going to open it to give it a good burnish. So let's just... So I've placed my photo mats in here already. So this is completely done. Uh, I didn't do anything on these half inches here. I don't think I will. I'm just going to leave it like this. Sorry if I'm shaking uh, you all the way. There we go. Okay, so those photo mats back in. So I will repeat this for my other waterfall on the front inside cover. And I will show you how you are going to put your page in here. So for the page, we're going to work on the hinge. Here I have my page. Your binding pocket is on your right hand side in the large pocket. That is your binding pocket. If you put your hand in there, this will open up. And you can slide that pocket over your hinge on that first half inch only. Up to the start of your taper. Make sure that you can get there and you can get there straight. Try to slide it down, slide it on straight and not do too much of this because then you might go crooked. So try to keep it a little bit straight while sliding it on. I remove the tape packing on the front side only. Place my hand back into that pocket and push down on my hinge a little bit because I don't want it to stick before it needs to. And now I am sliding it on there. It's a little bit hard to see which your gusset that is there. But I think I'm okay. So opening it up, giving it a burnish here. And now on the back, I would like to use a tool to... Get that out and again I am going to go to the middle of the... Uh, no, I need to do that here. Burnish that on there and then your page is in. So, oh, bulk wise I am at the max here but that's fine, it's perfect. I bulked up quite a bit so it's uh, that's great. I need to put in photo mats still. So I will repeat this with the um, waterfall element on the front cover and then we are done. So I hope you enjoyed the uh, album 
uh, the, uh, the tutorial and uh, yeah thank you for watching enjoy the rest of your day and i'll see you in the next one bye bye